Hello. So this is the video to help guide you in doing the assignment set for chapter 11 in uh, in BA 212, um, the second uh, section uh, or the second course in the principles of accounting sequence. Okay, so we're working in chapter 11. The chapter 11 homework Assignment set requires us to do exercise 5, exercise 7, exercise 10, and then we have one problem set, which is problem 1A. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and start off, and then this, is, this chapter is over uh, current liabilities and payroll accounting. So we're going to start off with a payroll accounting problem. So the payroll accounting problem... Okay, it's going to be exercise five is what we're going to do. And that is going to, uh, it's a BMX corporation or a company. It has one employee. Okay, and so when it has all the different tax set up that as explained here, it's going to have FICA, Social Security tax, at a rate of 6.2% of the first $117,000 paid to its employee. FICA Medicare taxes are going to be 1.45% of gross pay. Uh, we're also going to have FUDA taxes of 0.6%. SUDA, which is the state unemployment tax of 2.9% of the first 7000 paid uh, to an employee. And uh, then we're, we're, what we want to do is we're going to compute the uh, four taxes as applied to the employee's gross earnings for for um, each of the situations. So we have three scenarios, uh, A, B, and C. So I have here, you can see that I have set up already in this spreadsheet uh, the three scenarios. Okay, so we have, we have a, a column for the scenarios here. Uh, tax name, so this is FICA Social Security, FICA um, uh, Medicaid, or Medicare, I should say. Um, we have, uh, let's see, Medicare, uh, FICA for FUDA, which is federal unemployment, and then SUDA, which is state unemployment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and put the rates for each one of these. Okay, so the rate, and we're wanting to put these rates, so we want to make this column uh, formatted so it looks like uh, percentages. So we can go ahead and click the column there and click the percentage style up here. Okay, so as we type these numbers in, um, they'll convert over to percentage looking type numbers. But uh, what we're going to actually going to type into this first one is... 0 0.062 and that is 6.2 percent in decimal fashion right so something we want to make sure with this column is we have enough decimals showing <clears throat> we're going to want at least two here as we go on because the next one is the uh, medicare fica medicare which is uh, 0 0.015 145 there we go and that's 1.45 percent <clears throat> the fuda is uh, 0 0.006, that's 0.6 percent, and uh, the last one is the pseudo, which is 0 0.029, 2.9 uh, percent. Okay, now really the the trick with these problems is to make sure we know uh, we can uh, know what the subject, uh, what income is subject to the tax. Okay, so in this first scenario we've got uh, gross pay through August, so that's like January through August, right? Whatever the the timeline is for that, we just know up to date the payout that we've had so far is 6,400, <clears throat> and the gross pay is 800. Okay. So the the uh, so the calculation really that we're going to do for this. <clears throat> and we can we can put it out here in in a format so it uh, shows <clears throat> what the logic is. So what we're gonna do is uh, the cap for the Social Security income tax or FICA tax is going to be. Um, 
are $117,000. Okay, so that'll be the cap. So we're going to, first what we're going to put in is we're going to, um, Put in how much we're earning uh, this month. Okay, so it's eight hundred dollars we're earning. Okay, and then we're going to subtract from our uh, eight hundred dollars any amount that the pay up to this point is over the the cap. Okay, and, and that this is the if statement, so what we're going to do, we'll just do it in, in logic here, okay? We won't necessarily type it into the equation. So, <clears throat> so far we've got, um, down here, we're, we'll, let's use our little handy-dandy uh, deal that I've got down here. So, through August, we'll, we'll do this. Through August, for scenario A... $6,400 in earnings. September's earnings, $800. Okay. The cap, or the max amount, cap, and we'll, or we'll put uh, slash max, right, uh, of um, subject, income subject to tax is 117000 Okay. <clears throat> so, what, so what that tells us is uh, th this is the amount over max. And right now we're not. We're way under max. We're $109,000 under max. So we don't have to worry about that one. So everything's subject to tax. The next one is the same setup. Same numbers. Actually, you know what? For the Medicare, there is no uh, max or cap. That is, uh, it's all gross. So for FUDA, uh, it's $7,000 is our uh, cap. Okay, and so in this one we see that yeah we are over max by two hundred dollars, so we're going to take that amount out of the subject tax, and so it's only six hundred that we're going to be subject to. Okay, and uh, for both of these, that's they have the same uh, max cap. Okay, and then for the tax, basically the tax is going to be the subject income multiplied by the rate. Let me go ahead and drag that down. <clears throat> okay, so subject income minus the rate. And then the explanation is, uh, so this one here is full amount is subject. To tax. Uh, next one down is the same thing. Full amount subject. Uh, and this one is $200 is over max. Same thing for that. So that's scenario A. That's how it lays out for scenario A. Scenario B is a different story. So we're actually going to use these same rates. So we're going to go ahead and copy those rates down here. Uh, we're going to use the same equations. Okay, we'll go ahead and copy those down. We want to make sure we use the uh, actual, well, see, that's, that's right because we don't have any subject tax in there. So now we need to put our subject tax in. Okay, so uh, we're going to use our little handy-dandy box here. So the the income through August for scenario B is eighteen thousand two hundred. September's earnings is twenty one hundred. Okay, and so our cap max for Suda uh, and Fuda we're way over the max. So for these two down here, there's not going to be any subject tax. Um, for if we redo our cap here. For the Social Security, we're still way under. So that the full deal, 2100, is going to be subject. And Medicare, there is no max. So that's what it's going to be. So again, we're going to, oops. 
we're going to go ahead and bring these down here. This is going to be the same thing. And then the explanation for this is full amount is over max. Okay. For that. Okay. And then scenario uh, C. Again, we're going to drag down. We'll drag down our same uh, rates and uh, tax equation here. We're going to have to redo our amounts here. <clears throat> Through August, the amount is going to be 110,700. And then the September's earnings, 8,000. So, so here's our total earnings, right? This is total earnings, right? And then <clears throat> our cap uh, max is 117. So that's for our FICA Social Security. We see here that we're 1,700 bucks over. So out of this 8,000 over here, if we subtract, if we go ahead and take our 8,000 and we subtract out our overage, then that will give us the amount that we need to, uh, that is subject to tax, okay? So that's over here, that's 6,300. Uh, again, the full amount of Medicare is, there is no cap there. FUDA and SUDA are just way out of, they're way over the max, right? <clears throat> So let's go ahead and copy these explanations down. And um, all of them are going to be correct except this one. We're going to say um, that the Social Security is $1,700 uh, is over max. Okay. So there we go. Exercise 5. That's how it's laid out. Okay, now with exercise seven, exercise seven is going to require us to use scenario A that we created here. Okay, so we're going to use scenario A. We're actually going to copy it over here to our spreadsheet. Okay, so there, there's scenario uh, A. <clears throat> and then what it wants us to do is it wants us to record the the uh, journal entry for the, um, it wants us to record the employer's portion uh, for the, uh, the payroll expenses, employer's payroll tax expense and related liabilities. <clears throat> so this is the employer portion, not employee. Um, and so what we're going to do is, this, this is all employer, right? So employer has to double the FICA. Employer pays FUDA and SUDA. This is what we calculated. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, to know our total expense, uh, we're going to go ahead and just sum up this, all of these together. And so that's going to be our total. Okay, so it's going to increase our ex payroll taxes expense. This is going to be our account. Okay, so here's our. Um, Take this. There we go. So uh, our debit pay to payroll tax expense is going to be this number. Oh, I messed that up. There we go. So this is going to be equal this number. Okay. Now all of these payables are created right when payroll runs. As soon as payroll happens, as an employer, we owe the taxes that are uh, created through running our payroll. <clears throat> okay, and so these are the individual ones right here, right? FICA, Social Security, FICA, Medicare, FUDA, SUDA. So these are the ones that we're going to want to bring down here and put into these items. So this is our payables that we created. <clears throat> then we're going to go ahead and put a, a description on this one to say to record employer payroll taxes. And that's exercise seven. Okay, exercise 10 now. 
Okay, so exercise 10 is about warranties. <clears throat> so we're going to record a warranty liability. And this is what it's going to look like. Hitsu Corporation, right? Hitsu Co. sold a copier. So we're selling copy machines. Uh, it cost us, so let's say we're Hitsu, cost us $4,800 for that copier. We resold it for six thousand, right? So forty-eight hundred dollars is our cost of goods sold. And then uh, at, when we sold it, we actually have a warranty on it, two-year parts warranty on that. And we're estimating that the uh, warranty is going to be four percent of 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 the dollar sales. So our sales are our six thousand. And right here in the middle, uh, it says there are repair costs for $209. Some materials were broken, right? Or parts uh, for the copier broke during that first year after we sold it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to follow this down. It's going to have five parts to this problem. <clears throat> the first one, uh, the question is, how much warranty expense does the company report in 2015? So the company reports. <clears throat> so this is this is the way we figure this out. <clears throat> this is our warranty expense is going to equal four percent, right? Because that's the percentage of of dollar sales, right? So whatever we sold stuff for, we're going to take 4% of that as, or we're going to calculate 4% and we're going to use that number then as our warranty that we're setting up. So this looks like this. This is 4% uh, times our $6,000, right? And that actually is going to equal $240 is what that'll be. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, how much is the estimated warranty liability for this copier as of December 31st, 2015? So December um, 31st, 2015, it's the same year that we sold it, right? <clears throat> so at 240, the, the repairs don't happen until next year. So the, our liability for 2015 is what we calculated it for. So it's going to be, um, so we're gonna, we'll put in here December 31st, 31, 2015. Uh, what is it called? Estimated la, uh, warranty. Warranty. I, uh, ability is 240 bucks. Okay, now number three. How much warranty expense does the company report in 2016 for this copier? So uh, we had some repairs happen in 2016, right? So do we record any expense in 2016? The answer is no, we don't. All the expense was recorded in 2015 when we uh, recorded our estimated warranty liability. So the offsetting amount to this liability that we put on our books is the expense. Liability is a credit, expense is a debit. So we really don't have any more expense to record at this time. What we do have though is, uh, well, nothing. So, so what the answer to number three is, um, no additional... <clears throat> Warranty exp 
suspense is recorded. Okay, so and now we're num on to number four. How much is the estimated warranty liability for this copier as of December 31st, 2016? So at the end of 2016, what's our um, liability balance? <clears throat> so to start off, it was 240. And uh, and so that's the end of of 2015. We we said here up in uh, number two, the end of 2015, our balance was 240. Okay, so 2016, uh, we had a parts repair. Right, we had a parts repair of 209 so that'll be negative which leaves us a balance of uh, which is uh, 2016 balance right <clears throat> equals so we have our beginning balance add on the the adjustment there for the parts repair and we've got 31 bucks in that uh, warranty liability at the end of 2016. So now, uh, number five, we are preparing journal entries. So we're going to prepare a journal entry uh, to record the copier sale, the adjustment uh, dis uh, on December 2000, uh, 2015, December 31st, and we're also going to recognize warranty expense and repairs uh, we're going to recognize the expense on the uh, adjustment, and then we're gonna also going to do a journal entry for the repairs. Okay, so here are our journal entries. So we're going to have an account here, we're going to have a debit, and we're going to have a credit. Okay, so this first one is recording the um, sale of the machine. So we sold the machine. Um, did it say what we sold? Okay, it said cash. So it's $6,000 cash. So we got more cash. So that's a debit. Okay. And uh, then the credit on that is our revenue, right? So we're going to credit revenue. So that one is to uh, record sale of copier. Oh, oops, that didn't work. Not copies, copier. And then the next one is going to be uh, the the copier was sold, right? It was in inventory. So now we need to actually uh, count the expense for buying that copier and reduce inventory. So our cost of goods sold is 4800 bucks. That's how much we bought the copier for. And our merchandise inventory is 4800 bucks and that is uh, to record cost of copier sold all right all right so now our next one we need to uh, record that initial uh, that initial uh, warranty liability at the end of the year, 2015. So uh, the liability is the credit. So the debit here in this case is going to be that expense that attaches to the warranty. Okay, so it's, we're going to have a warranty expense. And like I said, the credit is the uh, estimated warranty uh, liability okay so here's our debit and that's gonna be we calculated it up here right it's 240 bucks okay 240 alrighty Okay, and then the very last one here, and that was that one right there was to record the 
uh, to record <coughs> estimated warranty liability. And then the very last one here is the, are those repairs that were done, right? So uh, in 2016, right, so we've got 2016, and then uh, the, the repairs that were done actually reduce our liability. So this is work that we, we had figured, we had estimated we were going to have to do, right? Once it's actually done, then that reduces our liability. So that's some stuff we thought we were going to have to do that we did, so it's done. So we can reduce the liability. So And that's actually this account right here, right? So estimated warranty liability. So we're going to reduce that by the amount of the parts. And we did use parts, right? We, we actually got the parts out of our inventory that we purchased, <clears throat> that we had in inventory, and um, we put them on the copy machine. So they're not ours anymore. So we're actually going to get rid of them. Repair parts inventory. Okay. So that's reduction of that asset that we have. And then we're going to say uh, to record cost of uh, repairs, warranty repairs. All right, so hopefully that helps you. All of that stuff there. Okay, so now we've got to do the problem set. So here we are. So there's the problem set. Uh, 1A is what we're doing, right? Problem set 1A. Tyrell Co. So we entered the following transactions uh, involving the short-term liabilities in 2014-15. Uh, uh, I think the dates were a little different on our template, but uh, we're, it'll, it'll, don't worry about that. So the first one that we're going to do here, so we've got some... Um, different things that we've got to calculate up at the up at the front here. Okay, we've got some notes that are that are uh, happening here. So that we gotta put the date of the note down, term of the note, so how long the, the note is in days, right? And then the maturity date. Okay. So this very first uh, note here is uh, locust, right? Is what we're looking at. see a national bank mm hmm okay so here we are so we so we purchased some stuff it with on terms and then and then on May 19th we uh, do a note we sign a note so we renegotiate the terms on that so here is our locust one and that's going to be uh, May 19th, right? Okay. And then the next one is uh, National Bank is July 8th, and Fargo Bank is November 28th. Now we're looking for the term of the notes. So we look on the Locust one, which is on May 19th, and we see that it's a 90 day note. We look on the National Bank. Uh, note and we see that it's 120 and then we look at the Fargo Bank and we see that it is 60 day uh, so then we can calculate out uh, our days and figure out when the due date is okay and so that's just a matter of taking uh, looking at a calendar and figuring out what the due dates are on these okay so the due date for this one is August 17th, um, and that's in, that's in the wrong format, but we won't worry about that. Hmm, I'm trying to 
to think what's what's catching it up. I think some of these were on wrong formats anyways. It's August 17th, so don't worry about it. On that one, uh, this one's November 5th. These are all going to say that they're wrong, but that's all right. We won't worry about it. And then this next one is January 27th. <clears throat> all right. So now, uh, now we figure out, got to figure out what the principle of the notes are. So again, we're looking back at our um, problem set there, and we figure out that the principle of this note is 35,000. Uh, principle of the National Bank is 80,000. 80, and then Fargo is 42,000. Okay. Oop, too, much, too many zeros. Okay, so now annual interest rate is going to be the, the noted interest rate on the note there. So that's going to be 10%, 9%, 8%. Fraction of year. So, so this is uh, like we talked about in class. So we're going to use 360 days for the total amount of the, in the year. The fraction is going to be how long the note is, or the term of the note, right? So we're going to go 90 divided by uh, 360. Okay. 120 divided by 360. And it's turning it into fractions. It's simplifying the fractions for us, which is totally fine. Divided by 360. Okay. And now we do our interest expense which is we take the top number, multiply it by the second number, and then the third. Boom, there we go. So and we can actually drag that same formula over for all the rest of them. Okay, so now we're going on to uh, number three. So this is accrued interest. So interest that isn't paid but since the time is passed, we're going to have accrued interest. So it says at the end of 2012, in our case, it's going to be, uh, let's see, this is going to be on Fargo. So the Fargo note is, uh, we're, we've got it in 2015, 14, 15, right? 2014. And so we're going to, we're going to say that, uh, so it started on November 28th, right? And then, um, so so we've got a, the total interest on the note is that, right? 560. So we calculated that. Our fraction of term means how many days at the end of the year have we gone in relationship to the entire term of the note? So if we calculate it out, this one started on November 28th. So we've got a couple days uh, there. December 31st, right? So there's 31 days in December. So we've got 2 plus 31. So that's going to be 33 days till the end of the period divided by 60, which is the total term of the note. Uh, and it's going to... It's going to round it, but you see up here at top, it's actually calculating correctly, which is okay. It's just kind of kooky that way. And so then we're going to go ahead and calculate by saying um, our total interest own, owed uh, for the note, and we're going to multiply that by the fraction of the term. Okay. And that'll say, okay, the, uh, at the end of the uh, year, this is what we have to uh, record as interest. Okay, as an adjustment. Interest on the Fargo note for 2013. <clears throat> so this one's pretty easy. It's a lot easier than what this one lays out. You can basically just subtract what we accrued before from the total and get the difference. But uh, we'll go through their fraction of term again. Again, it's uh, 560. The remaining fraction of term is 27 days. We used 33 before, right? And that's going to be over 60. And then the interest expense will be this 560 times our fraction of, whoops, 
560 equals 560 times the fraction of years, and that gives us the uh, correct answer there. Okay, so now we got to make a bunch of journal entries for this one. Uh, again, just ignore the the years on there. <clears throat> and so the entry, we're, the entry uh, journal entries that we're going to make is we're going to prepare journal entries for all the preceding transactions and events uh, of the years. Okay, so all the preceding ones. So our merchandise inventory. Remember, did we go and buy some buy some stuff? Yeah, it was the very first one, right, for Locust. So the amount of stuff we bought was what? It was 35,000, 35, I believe, on that. And so then we can put, uh, let's see. Uh -uh. Actually, it was it wasn't thirty five thousand. That's the amount that we had to to redo, right? So it was actually uh, that we purchased forty thousand two hundred fifty is what what it was on there. Uh, got the number wrong. Go back here. Got one number right and the other number wrong. Okay, here. So here we go. Now we're uh, swapping our accounts payable that we haven't paid off for this amount of stuff that we got, this merchandise. So we're going to reduce our accounts payable by the uh, note amount, which is 3500 uh, Nope, that's wrong. We're going to reduce the whole accounts payable. We haven't paid any of it. But we're going to reduce the whole thing because we're actually going to pay some cash here. So we're reducing the whole amount getting rid of it all the cash that we ended up paying is 5250 and then the uh, notes payable is that 3500 35000 that we were looking for finally it came up okay <clears throat> okay so now the next thing that we're going to do here is uh, we're going to um, get some money from a, uh, the notes payable that we gave to the national bank right so the amount of cash that we got was uh, 80000 And that's a liability because that's not our cash. We were just borrowing it. So August 17th, interest expense on our locust, right? So this is when this one's due. Okay. So our interest expense here, we're going to have to calculate it. Right? We already calculated up there. We can bring that down. It's going to be... Uh, 875 the faced value of the note right was 35,000 and so a combination of these is going to give us the total cash that we ended up paying um, and then we're gonna do it for uh, our national bank uh, note as well so the interest we calculated above is 2400 the note was for 82,000, uh, 80,000, sorry, 80,000. And then the combined amount for that, the total cash out the door is 82,400. Okay. Okay, now, now we've we're come down here to our Wells Fargo. <clears throat> and we're come, we're going to take out some more money here. All right. So the money that we're going to take out uh, for this loan here is forty-two thousand. Forty-two thousand. Then at the end of the year, since time has passed, we're at the end of the counting period. Time has passed. Interest is payable. <clears throat> we're not going to pay it yet, though. But it's payable because time has passed, right? So and we did those calculations. So this was to the end of the year, 308 bucks. And then as we finally pay it off, we're going to be able to say, okay, our interest expense was the remaining that we hadn't recorded yet, which is 
252. Notes payable is the face value of that note that we took out, 42,000. Interest payable, we just made that in the entry above, it's 308, right? And then our cash is combination of all of our debits, right? The credit here is 42,560. There we go. So that does that. And uh, hopefully this has helped as I walk through it. Um, you've been able to uh, understand how all these things flow together and work with our current liabilities. Some of them have a couple of, you know, just a little tricky calculations there. But as you understand the uh, the nature of liabilities, that they are permanent accounts, right, that we owe people. And then typically working with our liabilities, we're going to have an expense. So whenever we pay those liabilities, we're going to have an expense at that time, right? Or we could have it as interest accrues as well. And so just those are a couple of issues to look at on um, how the liabilities work. And so we will see you in class uh, later this week. Thanks. Bye.